Hello and uh, welcome to our next time. We are on Mark chapter 11 at the moment. Uh, this is a great chapter, so I hope we can get a lot of stuff out of it this morning. Uh, the title for this day is uh, Keeping Up Appearances. So uh, let's just kind of dive in a little bit and I'll explain why I chose that uh, title as we go through it. Okay, let's go. So we move on to verse 12 and it says this, On the following day when they came to Bethany, he was hungry and seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. It was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat from you again. And his disciples heard it. Uh, now what was this about well we're going to see, see a little bit more what this is about but at this moment jesus says we can just need to um identify a couple of things jesus sees this tree and it's bearing leaves but no fruit now we will see a little bit later that is really important because the um the fig leaf and the fig itself, the, the tree, was actually very um, prominent within the culture of that time. And in the Old Testament, was was referring a lot to Israel. And in this time and in this moment, we see something really telling. And that is there were leaves but no fruit. Now, often we see the leaves and then fruit comes. But with this particular tree, what we would we usually see in, these, in the area, and see even now today, is that the figs appear first and then the leaves, or they appear at the same time. So the fruit appears and then the leaves. So Jesus would have expected to see fruits from seeing the leaves, but actually he didn't. So that's, keep that in mind as we move forward. But let's just uh, move forward to uh, the, next, uh, the next section. So in verse 15 onwards, we see this Jesus entering into the temple. And it says this, And they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who had sold uh, and those who had bought into the temple. And he overturned the tables and the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons and it goes on to explain how his frustration um, and he overturned the tables and he was so mad at it now in this time it's really important to remember that uh, that the um the temple was meant to be a place where people could bring their worship and their sacrifices and these money changers they who are they well they're people that actually were changing the normal currency into a currency of the temple you know you would bring your money and they would say okay this is great you brought your money but now we need to change it into a different type of currency but this is going to charge you we're going to charge you in order to do this or perhaps they would bring an offering to the temple uh, a lamb and they would say you know we want to sacrifice this and bring this to the lord and then the people at the, the temple would say you know what that's great that you brought it but actually we see kind of blemishes on it uh, but you know what we have our own sheep over here that are absolutely perfect and you can have one of those if you sell us yours oh, oh by the way there'll be an extra fee as well so people have changed the concept of what the lord's temple should have been it should have been a place of prayer and a praise but actually come to be a place of money changing and business and jesus confronts his head on although on face value the temple was a place of holiness actually inside it wasn't now, I just want to compare this a little bit when we see in 1 Corinthians where, where we're told that the, the body is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Spirit. So we, the Spirit dwells inside of us. And sometimes, as we shall see, that actually what Paul was saying in that is, you know, as the Spirit dwells inside of us, the fruit that should come out of us should be something that we are, are aware of. And that's what we take in and what we do to our bodies has a real impact. And in a similar way, Jesus is saying, you know what, inside the temple should be a place of praise. But sometimes on, this, on the face value of it, we're keeping up appearances to look as if we're holy, but not inside we're actually not. And sometimes ourselves, we can be the same way, can't we? You know, we can kind of present ourselves as being uh, perhaps holy um, than we really are and be more better than what we really are. But inside, there's more stuff going on. And Jesus wants to cleanse all that out and say, you know what? We need to have a uh, good inside that comes from the inside out. We're not to be keeping up appearances, but we are aware, we are to be aware of what we are inside and we are to be prepared to understand that, you know, sometimes if we have a sinfulness inside of us, that we need to be driving out and turning over the tables just as Jesus did. Um, so let's just think of that in the back of our minds. Just a little thought for you to think about as we move on. And then we go on to verse 20 and he goes back to the fig tree. And let's just, this is the really point for today. So let's just see what we can get from this one little bit today. So we move on to uh, verse uh, 20. And from here, Jesus comes back to the fig tree. And it says this, As they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. 
And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you curse has withered. And Jesus answered him, have faith in God. Truly, I say to you, whoever says this mountain be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says will come to pass. It will be done for him. And he continues a little bit further on from that. In other words, what Jesus is doing, he's giving the picture of the fig tree as an example for us as believers. He was saying to the disciples, in another words, this fig tree is, is giving false advertising. <laughs> it's giving false advertising. It has the leaves there, so the fruits are meant to be there, but there is no fruit. And in the same way, he's saying, you know what? We as Christians and we as believers, all, uh, it is great that we proclaim and we have this image that we are Christians and that we are the church, but we also need to be bearing fruit. So my question for you today is how much fruit are we bearing? You know, and it's and it's not like Jesus is condemning and he's not saying, you know, what you are not doing your job properly as Christians. It says in the answer to this is prayer. You know, if you're not bearing as much fruit as you wish you were or you think you should be, then come to God in prayer and pray to God for prayer. We don't want to be giving false advertising. We don't want to be like this tree who says, come, there is fruit here. But actually, when you get close enough to it, you realize there's nothing there at all. Or we don't want to be like the um, people in the temple who are like given this facade that actually, you know what, so we are we are holy. But actually, when you come inside the courts, actually, we're, actually, we're the complete opposite. We need to be bearing fruit. There is a stark contrast between the image and the reality. There's, I'll say it again, there's a stark contrast between the image and the reality. We can have an image that we are doing things and that things are great on the surface, but the reality is far different. So my question and my challenge for us today is this. What fruit are we bearing as Christians? If we're Christians, listen to this. You know, we want to be bearing much fruit. And not only do we want to, we want to be advertising properly, if you like to say it. It's a bit of a weird way of saying it, isn't it? But in a sense, you can put, take it like that. We want to be saying to the world, look, we are Christians. And you know we can are Christians by our love and by our fruits. And in order to do this, we need to be praying. And what a great sense of security and affirmation that is for us to know that if we want to grow and have more fruits, what is the way we do it? We pray. It says, Jesus says, pray to God that you would bear fruit. So here we are this morning, or whenever time you're watching this, let us bear fruit that is worthy of the gospel. Let us be a church that we, not only will we, you see us singing and worshipping, but when you see us outside of a Sunday morning, you will see the fruit of the gospel, the fruits of Christians and of Jesus uh, entering into people's lives. And you will see the goodness that we would be a people of joy, of patience, of peace and kindness. And that we would take that to heart. Nothing would stop us from wanting to reach uh, the, the goal that Jesus has given us of producing these fruits for all to see and eat and enjoy. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message this morning. And we just pray that we would take it to heart, Lord. We don't want to be people who are just keeping up appearances. We want to be a people who are absolutely in love with you and shine from the inside out. Lord, that you would transform us from the inside out and that we would be a people who are not just rejoicing that we have salvation in you, but we'd be a people who are rejoicing because we want others to see you and we want to bear fruit because that's what you call us to be. You call us to be a people who will bear fruit for you, where we would have and display kindness and generosity and love and joy to all those and patience to all those of us around us and that we would take that seriously as Christians and we would live a life that is worthy of our calling and worthy of following you Lord Jesus would we just be a people who just are who are the same who are transparent Lord and even though we're fallen creatures and we will sin but yet Lord we want to ask you to keep reminding us helping us to be more like you as we have this massive privilege of praying to you and asking you for strength and guidance and guidance and that you would lead us and that we could ask for anything in your name and if we we ask for this this morning that we would be a people who would bear fruit the fruit of the gospel in jesus name amen